Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Oversky Warlark 80. And this one was sent in for review from GearBest, so thank you for that. It is a little 80 millimeter size uh, FPV quadcopter, an indoor, like a something like a tiny loop, like this is my F36 here, something very similar to this. So I'm very excited to check this out. Let's see here, just got some bubble wrap over the top. Looks like we got a little Micro Lozy USB charger. An extra set of four spare props, which is very nice because not everyone has these props. Obviously, they're a little more unique than something you'd normally find. Two little pieces of Velcro <clears throat> and the quad. Is there anything below this? Nope. So there's no extras and no um, instructions in this guy. So that's quite interesting there. So let's take a look at the quad right here right away. Obviously, you can tell the design is fairly similar to something like a tiny whoop, but as you can see, it is a little bit smaller. Let me try and, if I line up the motor, the back left one, you can see the front right, it's a little bit bigger. So this is probably like a 70, 73, and this is a 90 here. So, oh look, there's a battery in the bottom. <laughs> it's in a little bag too, that's interesting. I guess, I think they actually have to have it in a bag for shipping though. And looks like this is a little 300 milliamp hour uh, 1S, so 3.7 volt battery here, so 300 milliamps with the micro Lozy connector, and that just slots under this guy here, and it's it's not very stable or tight in there, but it works all right, and I, you could probably fit, you can see you have some extra room on the side, and probably uh, half a millimeter, you could stretch it thicker, and obviously a little bit longer, but then you'd probably throw off the CG, so you could fit a little bit bigger battery, actually it's a little front heavy. But that just goes there. And this quad, I believe, uses 7 millimeter motors. Look. Yeah, because... Yeah, this one's definitely... These these uh, quads are 6 millimeter, And I'm pretty sure these are 7 millimeters here. So they should have a little bit more power. You can see the ducted fan design. It's pretty much the same, except this one has a lot more aggressive ducts. However, in something as small, it might not actually matter. So let's take the uh, canopy off. It just has two little slots on the edge and we can get um, a look at the inside so you can see here let's see what is this you can have your um, inside there's your little um, flight controller there and it is a real flight controller not um, just a little toy one see the micro USB cable sticking out the back there so you can program this in beta flight clean flight I'm not sure if it's an F3 or an F1 flight controller, but something this small doesn't matter that much, but it's, it's a real flight controller. You can see the motors plug in here, so there's easy swap, um, easy repairs. They just have little channels cut out. It's actually really nice there. And then also you have the VTX built in with a little linear um, antenna here, which is really nice, not a clover leaf because this saves weight and extra durability for the same performance in something like rather than this. This is better here. Um, just has a little UFL connector, so you can replace that as well. Then up here, there's also the board underneath it. There's a couple, you can see it's like a mother-daughter board thing. Hopefully you can see the pins. It has a little connector right here, this black thing. They connect together. Uh, same on the other side. There's a little button down here, which is probably your bind button, because this also has a built-in receiver, which you can see right here. And I have the FreeSky version. You can see they also offer the um, Spectrum for DSMX slash 2, um, the FreeSky, which I have. I'm not sure. It might be an XM receiver. It might not be. Futaba for the SF, HSS, and FlySky. So quite a few, four different brands here. So hopefully they have your radio um, that you have. So this will, should give you a lot better flying. We take a look at the camera up front. You can see it's kind of odd. Most of them have the camera just sitting up top. This one, the design, has it built into the front. So you shouldn't. You might get these ducks in in view. I'm not exactly sure because these are really wide CMOS cameras, wide field of view. Um, but it is a little camera. It's not an all-in-one VTX because the VTX is up here. So it's interesting. Um, but you can see this little mount here. You see all these slots. The camera actually is it's like a board camera, a little tiny board camera. And you can um, unscrew these two little screws here, pull this off, and then adjust the camera to the slots you want. So it looks like it came with about 15 degrees of up tilt. And it looks like you can go even more to probably 20, 25 degrees of up tilt. You can actually go back to negative 5, I think. The back one's negative 5. You can go back pretty far there. So you can choose your tilt, which is really cool. I like that bracket. And then when this plugging in, let me see if 
it has any LEDs on this guy. Okay, it has a couple on the board and the video transmitter for status LEDs, but no visual flying LEDs. Okay, so I'm going to now bind this to my Tyrannus, and I'll fly it around a lot before we come back just to make sure I know everything about it. And then I'll do a line of sight flight as well as an FPV flight to finish up the review. I won't be showing the clean flight or beta flight. I'll probably leave whatever it has on it just to show you exactly how it'll come because there's only so much you can do with these micros and as well as it's been covered by several other videos so far. Um, the setup for this, so I don't think I need to show you it again. You can reference those videos. So yeah, let's get to that. All right, here we are for the indoor line of sight flight of the Warlark 80 from Oversky RC. So let's just get the stock battery in here. And I found that it was quite a bit loose and it comes out on crashes. However, you could put a piece of foam or something in there or that Velcro they give you. I'm just Welcome too lazy. To so there we go. Plug in my Tyrannus and I run it without the canopy because this is almost two grams. So I'll save in that weight there. So should we should be good on the quad here. So I'll take off <clears throat> in stabilized mode. So this is with the accelerometer on. You can see it's uh, you can adjust your rates however you want because of beta flight. It's pre-flash with beta flight. But I like to fly. I'm now an acro. You can see it does not self-level. A little bit more tricky on an indoors micro quad, but. I tend to like flying an acro anyways, even on a little quad like this. The power, here's a full throttle punch. Right there. So you can see it's not very responsive and doesn't have a lot of power, which is another reason definitely to have that canopy off. It's pretty decent though. And if you do punch it and drop it, you can do flips. You can see it's just a little sketchy. It just does not have the power. Uh, it can do them, but uh, yeah, definitely not recommended. Those are fully manual, by the way. And I am running with air mode enabled. Oops. Oh. Oop. Durability test, it's not turning on. <laughs> Alright, and just let it sit for a couple seconds. The accelerometer probably got whacked out. I didn't even unplug it. But yeah, it flies. Go back to angle mode, I guess. The rates, um, the, the yaw rate is way too fast for this guy. It just spins out, but you can obviously adjust that in beta flight to however you like. But I kept the rate stock because you do have the nicer controller that you're using so you can um, be more gentle in the sticks but it just the motors can't they don't have enough torque to handle higher rates to change quick enough so you can see it does fly pretty well definitely not great but for a tiny whoop style quad I think it's pretty nice get a tight funnel going yeah, it doesn't really like to... stay. Yeah, it looks pretty cool up close. It does definitely look better with the canopy on, but once again, two grams, I'd rather not. And the prop guards, they work pretty well. I have, most of the time it does that, where it kind of flips out. But at least it doesn't kind of suction up against the wall so much. And then the props, or your antenna hit the ceiling first. So it's pretty well protected. I've had a couple knocks. You saw that one just a couple seconds ago. And have not broken anything yet. So it's proven to be pretty durable for me. Oof. Alright. Staying in the for landing. Alright. So, now let's do some line of, or not line of say, we just did that. Let's do some FPV around the house here. All right, so right away you can see the camera does have an OSD on it. You can see there's an artificial horizon, which honestly I think should just get rid of. Um, and you can't see it because my DVR actually crops the image. Um, 
yet I've tried to stop this, but there's actually voltage shown down below and a timer. I hate how my DVR crops it, but it cropped it out. It's on the bottom there. So the field of view is pretty low, but you can see right here in the camera, it's color. The colors are all blown out, but pretty much the entire flight, and I had every light in the house turned on, it was black and white mode. And the other cameras I've had have done pretty well with keeping the colors on, but this one just does not. It just really likes black and white. I really don't like this camera. It, it performed pretty poorly in all conditions. I think it's probably one of the weakest points in the squad here. Um, yeah. As for the handling characteristics, um, it's moving around pretty decently. I'm flying in acro mode. You can see up on the OSD there, and I'm getting um, plenty fine signal with the Tyrannus through the whole house, even in that back room there. See back to color and then back to black and white, um, and the video is just fine. But the field of view I found of the lens, um, keep in mind this video is cropped, I can't fix that. Um, it was pretty small, I wish it was bigger, and it, it just felt a little loose in the air due to it being a little underpowered and heavy, as I've said from the line of sight flight. But you know, I think it still performed pretty well. Here's my 3D printer I moved onto this yoga mat to make it quieter. And yeah, I'll just let you enjoy the rest of the flight here. Alright, so let's just finish up the review on this guy, the Oversky Warlark 80. So, in terms of power, I think it was it was alright, especially on a full battery. It was it was pretty decent power, but when the battery got a little bit lower, or you're trying to do quicker yaw moves, or just stuff that needs a lot more throttle, you could definitely feel it it's slug being sluggish and not having enough power to pull through. Um, because you can tell just from this frame, everything on it, it's quite heavy for what it is, even without the canopy. I definitely recommend running without this, it's an extra 2 grams. Um, just the plastic itself is super beefy. So, and the motors, and it doesn't have the angled struts that the actual Inductrix has, so it loses some extra thrust and efficiency there. But you know, it still flies pretty decent, but I think it could be improved upon. Um, as for the camera, oh my gosh, where do I start? The camera is awful. You can see that from the DVR. I wish they would do, do a different camera. The flight controller, everything worked fine. I had a couple weird things to set it up with the receiver binding it to my transmitter. I had to have it in DA and change the ordering of the, I'll post some screenshots here, the ordering of my transmitter mix to get it to line up with this. It was weird, but eventually got it, so hopefully these pictures here will help you along. Um, I never had any issues with range or video signal, but the camera was terrible. The, the link was solid. Um, you know, the battery, I'd get about three to four minute flight time depending on how I fly. The charger takes about 45 minutes, and I think it's a pretty good quad overall, you know. Definitely some things that could be improved. The battery, I find a lot fell out of here. Um, so if you put use this piece of Momer Velcro to make it a little bit tighter fit in there. And as for this camera bracket, the camera also isn't a very wide field of view. 
So I kind of I'm only running at the the lowest up tilt you can besides being flat because any t any higher and then you can't see anything because the field of view is not very wide. Um, and just flew it my Quantum V2 and record the DVR there it crops it a little bit even more. But you know pretty decent overall. I'll leave a link down below. Check it out from Gearbest. Um, thanks for sending it in. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon if you wish to help support the channel and you enjoy what I do. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.